settling an 18-year-long battle that rages on at issue, compensating the now thousands of rescue workers from 9-11 who are still waiting for help from Washington. John Stewart says Rand Paul is making things difficult. Rand Paul says John Stewart is making things up. Well, look, I know John Stewart, and John Stewart is sometimes funny, sometimes informed, but in this case, he's neither funny nor informed. I've spent my entire Senate career putting forward pay fors for any time spending has expanded. As, as, as soon ago as two weeks ago, I put forward a pay for for the border funding. I put forward a pay for for the disaster funding. I do this on every new bit of funding. So he's really not informed, and his name calling just sort of exposes him as a, a left winger, part of the left wing mob that really isn't using his brain and is willing to call people names. And it's it's really kind of disgusting because see, he pretended for years when he was on his comedy show to be somebody who could see both sides and see through the BS on both sides. Well, now he is the BS. The BS meters through the roof when you see him calling people names, calling people an abomination, when I'm asking something very reasonable, that an amendment be included to consider whether we should pay for this for taking money somewhere else in the budget. Doesn't actually reduce the deficit. It just keeps the deficit from getting bigger. It's a very reasonable thing. I've done it dozens and dozens of times, including on the tax bill. The left-wing mob says, oh, but you're for tax cuts, but you're not for doing anything to offset the tax cuts. There's something called PAYGO, and I was the leader in trying to keep that in the tax bill. It was in the tax bill when we passed it and was later taken out of the, past, the tax bill over my objections. So the, the whole thing is but misrepresented did you vote for that when it was taken out? I mean, or was it too late? I mean, their no, argument that they've in. been making it was still is in, that actually. you, you were still, okay still, paying yeah, for, yeah, for, for, for tax but cut, but not this stuff. Right. But they're misinformed, and they're either liars or misinformed. When we passed the tax bill, the pay-go provision was in the tax bill. So as we passed the bill, the next instruction should have been, by the end of the year, we would have had to cut spending. In a subsequent bill, they went ahead and got rid of the pay-go rules in some big, enormous spending bill. I objected to it, and I forced an amendment vote on it, and only nine people voted with me. But when I voted for the tax bill, it actually had provisions in it that said you'd have to cut spending if there's any less revenue. But the left-wing mob doesn't care about the truth. John Stewart doesn't care about the truth. It's all about me, 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 John Stewart. Look at me. I'm on TV. But here's well, the you, thing you, is, Do you regret that thing. tax bill vote then, Senator, given what happened on the pay-go thing? No, because I voted for a tax bill with the pay go provision know, in it. I know, but now knowing that they took that out after you no, regret I that regret, vote. No, I regret that 91 of my colleagues voted to take pay go out when I didn't, but you shouldn't blame me for that. The other thing about the tax bill that the left won't tell you is guess what? When we cut corporate tax rates, we got more revenue. Art, Art Laffer was right. Supply side economics works. You lower tax rates and you can sometimes get more revenue. Revenue went up after the tax cuts. The deficit did too, but because we we refuse to address spending in this town. And what I don't like about this, about the lies and the ad hominem attacks from John Stewart and Kirsten Gillibrand and the whole left wing mob, is they are telling a lie. I've consistently been for spending cuts, even on tax bills, and I'm going to offer one on this bill also. No matter how good the cause is, we should offset the spending. It makes no sense to borrow money from China so if you don't to give it to it, Buddy, no I, matter I, how I good the idea is. But if you don't offset it, are you, Rand Paul, saying, you will not vote for this. You will not vote for this measure. I don't vote for any spending that's not offset. I didn't vote for the border spending recently, even though I support more money for the border, because the responsible thing to do is to take that money from somewhere else in the budget. So I have consistently voted against spending bills if they do not, if they are not budgetarily neutral, and if we don't uh, expand the deficit, I won't vote for it. We have a $22 trillion debt. We're borrowing more than a, almost $2 million every minute, and I've consistently sounded that thing and what is really disgusting is people like John Stewart lie to the American public. People like Kirsten Gillibrand lie to the American public. I have been absolutely consistent from the get-go. I, I have forced like four or five votes this year on having offset spending cuts to new spending. I lose every time because you, Republicans you, and Democrats that, are terrible. Senator, if you stick to that, and it, it might be perfectly budgetarily meritable, but uh, you know it's 10.2 billion over a decade. You've already said that if it is not paid for, they don't find. In some way to, to pay for that money, that. Then, then you would not support this right. measure, right? But here's it's worse than that, Neil. It's not $10.2 billion over 10 years. It's about $2 billion a year every year until 2092. 
There is no limit. This is the thing. This bill is completely irresponsible. You know what it says for how much money we're going to spend? Such sums as are necessary. So if John Stewart could read, maybe he'd read the bill and say, oh, my God, who would who in their right mind would vote for a bill that doesn't have a dollar amount in it? It has no dollar amount. But there's no, way of no, there's no way of knowing, right? Isn't that part of the problem? Because there well, was no way to forecast these right. so illnesses and sicknesses that, uh, that came as a we, result. We do, right? this, we do this on disasters, too. So we just right. make up an enormous number. What you would do if you were responsible is you'd allocate it for three, four, five years and come back and reassess it. That's a responsible way to budget. But to have an open-ended thing that goes to 2092, really? We're going to have a spending bill that says you spend whatever you want until 2092. It doesn't matter how good the cause is. It's irresponsible. And really, people need to wake up and not be so sort of overwhelmed by celebrity that they take out-and-out -out falsehoods and ad hominem attacks from really a gutter snipe like John Stewart. All right, but, but you know, people are dying uh, more than they thought as a result. And, uh, and they're and getting what, money, and they're getting money, Neil. Are you satisfied with that, that, that it could stop, that this, this doesn't it, happen, it, it, it's going yeah. to stop? See, this is the false narrative that John Stewart and Kirsten Gillibrand want you to believe. There's $2 billion in the fund, and as we speak, Payments are going out every day. We've given $12 billion. This isn't a stingy country. This isn't a country who forgot the 9-11 heroes or the firemen. This is a country that's already paid $12 billion to those people who both died and have died since then. This is a country that will continue to do more, but we shouldn't completely lose our head and say, oh, well, it's a good cause, so we really shouldn't have any budgetary restraints. That is uh, But there are, uh, is uh, whatever your cause, foolish. right, Senator, there are no budgetary. This, this president is presiding over what will be the second Second trillion dollar deficit in Rome. No one seems to be watching the till, right? Except for me, and I continue to watch it. No matter how good the cause is, I say if you want to spend new money, find waste elsewhere in a 4.2 trillion dollar spending budget. It's everywhere. How about the 300 thousand dollars we spent on Japanese quail to see if they're more sexually promiscuous on cocaine? How about the $2 million we spent studying whether or not if someone sneezes on the food in front of you at the cafeteria, whether you're more or less likely to get the food? That runs throughout the budget, and until you're willing to cut that kind of stuff out to pay for something more important like the 9-11 victims, you're not doing your job. Just to add it on and borrow it is inexcusable. It's wrong, and it really is what's wrong with Washington, is that everybody fears people like John Stewart will, will say, you lack humanity. People fear that, and they fear that celebrity. Liberty, so they're unwilling to stay up and speak truth to lies, and that's what but I'm even willing leaving, to do. Even leaving John Stewart out of it, I mean, a lot of these uh, those who acquired these illnesses and, and other Ill uh, sicknesses that come with this, they're going to have a hard time understanding your attention to the budget and deficits that they see running out of control, and they're going to go back to you and Senator Mike Lee and say, "You stop this for me, something that could help well, actually, me." Actually, even that's a lie, Neil. The bill's going forward because Mike Lee and I stood up on principle. Guess what? What? They're going to give us our amendments. I've just come from the floor. Our amendments are going to be voted on next week, and we'll have a vote. But the American people will get to see who and doesn't so this care will pass. about the you, debt. You, and this will pass, in other words. No, we will vote and we will lose. There's only about 10 to 15 people in the Senate who care about the deficit. So my first no, 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 vote. I mean is this will, will, what John Stewart and John Feel and others are arguing for. It's ultimately going to happen. It's going to pass, yes, okay. and it's going to get a vote on. So when they argue and they bellyache and say, oh, he's blocking the bill. No, I'm trying to have a debate in our country about whether or not deficits matter and whether or not we should offset new spending. And I think I should be commended and loudly cheered for being one of the few fiscally responsible people up here. And I think we ought to set the record straight because John Stewart can't just have a free pass to lie to people, think he's a celebrity and think facts don't matter. Look, the left wing every day is accusing Donald Trump of not adhering to the facts. Here's John Stewart making up his own set of facts so he can feel good about himself, and we shouldn't let it stand. Let me switch real quickly to the Iranian foreign minister, uh, Javad Zarif. Uh, you are apparently open to meeting with him. We heard the president today saying he doesn't know too much about it, but he's open to something like that. Uh, what do you expect to come of that? I think diplomacy is a good idea, and I think that if sanctions are to work, you also have to talk about removing them. So I think the discussion now, since we have maximum pressure on and maximum sanctions on Iran, now we have to say, what would we be willing to remove them for? What type of behavior would we be willing to remove them for? I think there is a possible opening that Iran would sign an agreement saying that they won't develop a nuclear weapon, ever. 
that would be a huge breakthrough. I think President Trump is one of the few people who actually could get that deal, and he'll get it because he's strong and he's showing maximum pressure, but he's also willing to talk. This is a president who's willing to talk to Kim Jong-un from North Korea. It's a president who's also offered to meet with the Iranians. I hope it will take place. I hope there will be diplomacy. And once again, I'm, far, I'm fighting to try to prevent war, and I, I think that should be something that's commended, not, not excoriated. Senator, you mentioned the president. I'd be remiss if I didn't get his clarification today or attempted clarification of comments made at a North Carolina rally last night where when referring to uh, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, Minnesota, the Somalia uh, native uh, who came to this country in her childhood, uh, go back, go back, go back, uh, that, that he was trying to temper that down, tamp that down, um, and re he regrets what happened. What did you think? You know, I've met a lot of people from Somalia, from Bosnia, in my town. We have a lot of refugees. I treated many of them as patients. Many of them are good people, have integrated in our community, become business owners, restaurant owners, trucking company owners, and are good people. And so I see the good side of refugees who appreciate what a great country we have. I've been disturbed, and I talk to people every day who are worried about how Omar just bashes our country and says it's terrible. She wanted justice. She came here. She, we, we provided for her. We gave her all kinds of benefits when she came to this country. Country, she was elected to Congress, which is an enormous privilege that was that was given to her. And yet she continues to bash our country as being this terrible, awful, no good, rotten place. And I kind of side with the president on this that uh, I do think she needs to be called out. And her, her constituents will ultimately have to decide whether they want somebody who, who really just kind of hates the place that gave her all these great things or whether she does appreciate really a lot of good things about our country. Do you think the president just chose the wrong words or do you go as far as as some Democrats do that he's a racist. No, I, don't, I didn't see anything racist in it. A racist comment is when you refer to somebody based on the color of their skin. I think he referred to the content of their speech. And so if we're going to live in a society where you cannot criticize someone because of the color of their skin, because any criticism of someone of a different race would be called racist, we live in a, a world of such political correctness we're never getting anywhere. Look, I'm opposed to the socialism that AOC is promoting and Omar and Talab or Talab. I'm opposed to all of that. It has nothing to do with the color of their skin, but I can't call them out for their socialism or for their ungratefulness to our country because of the color of their skin. No, I think the left wing went crazy on the president, and they do on everything, and it's mob rule. Mob rules Twitter, mob rules Facebook, and they're trying to squelch any kind of, uh, any kind of dissension or any kind of uh, pushback from the right. All right, that was uh, Senator Rand Paul, his uh, counterpart, Mike Lee of Utah, just announcing that they have gotten unanimous consent for a vote on two amendments and final passage of the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund. Uh, this includes offsets for the $10.2 billion this will cost over the next decade. Uh, that feature will likely be voted down, but the votes are there to approve the compensation fund extension in a matter of days. We'll keep you posted.